the legal instruments uh, that govern uh, access to, um, to remedies for victims of human rights abuse and environmental abuse by corporations outside the EU have now been uh, adopted and are in place already quite some time ago, 2001 and 2007 uh, respectively. And I think so it's a very good, uh, very good moment and a very opportune and important uh, to gather comprehensive information on how these uh, tools and instruments are implemented in practice, how the jurisdiction is, uh, is, um, um, is going on and taking place. And I'm looking very much forward also to the, um, to the project's results and recommendations that may come out in orbit and which will help eventually uh, also to improve uh, these, legal these legal instruments EU-wide. But I think the, the project uh, also may, may have a much wider uh, importance and much wider impact and help to, uh, to contribute to the enforcement of, of the principle of policy coherence overall for EU policies. The EU is based on, uh, on, sustainable, on principles of sustainable development, fundamental rights, human rights, good governance, and so it is very important that these principles govern also its external policies, trade policy and development policy in particular. And uh, I think steps have been taken in the past, um, legislative and non, to improve um, the way corporations um, corp uh, respect human rights and sustainable development principles. Um, steps like the directive on the disclosure of non-financial information that has been adopted last year and will enter into force uh, in about a year, and which should also uh, bring improvements in this, uh, in this area for stakeholders and workers of corporations, of large companies, of course, uh, for which this directive applies. And in its trade policy, the European Union has also made uh, steps uh, forward to improve um, the um, trade, not only as, uh, as, uh, as, tra as a trade uh, policy as such, but trade as a tool for sustainable development and, um, and human rights and good governments in the partner countries. If the, for instance, the, the system of uh, generalized preferences that has been reformed recently, partner countries receive support uh, in these areas if they adopt uh, key, uh, key UN conventions, the ILO conventions, for instance. And so um, there's growing attention and also, um, also legislative improvements in these areas. Um, I would like to wish you a very uh, productive day and uh, I'm looking forward, as I said, uh, on behalf of my colleagues also in Brussels who are uh, behind also the, the funding of for these projects to their recommendations and results. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much for these uh, encouraging uh, words. Uh, we also uh, were lucky to um, um, secure additional funding to support uh, this uh, European Commission project, um, both by the uh, Ministry of Labour, Social Affairs and Consumer Protection and the Austrian Chamber of Labour. And I would like uh, now the two representatives of these institutions to say a few words of welcome. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, I, wish you, I want to wish you a warm welcome to Vienna, and I hope that all the participants, and especially the participants from abroad, uh, will find some time to enjoy the city in this wonderful time of year with all the lights and the Christkindle markets and, uh, and the punch. Um, um, I would like to thank the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute for Human Rights for the invitation, and to this uh, third training session taking place in the context of the European research project Human Rights in Business. The Austrian Social Ministry is looking back on a long and fruitful cooperation with the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute. We co-funded already several EU projects like the current one, for example the very interesting study on the implementation of the EU Decent Work Agenda. 
the findings and results were always very useful and for sure provided an advance uh, to the political debate. Let me say a few words concerning our topic today, human rights and business. As you might know, the Austrian government is currently working on the establishment of a national action plan on human rights. We are responding to long expressed demand within the uh, Austrian civil society by doing this. Um, in cooperation with all ministries, federal provinces, the Austrian Ombudsman Board and civil society organizations, about 50 measures and projects have been developed already. The Austrian Social Ministry has been committed to including the topic human and business rights in the National Action Plan on Human Rights. And in, th in this context, our ministry, due to its competence, focuses on the protection, recognition and strengthening of workers and consumer rights. It is of utmost importance to develop strategies that ensure those rights at all the stages of the value chain and not only in Austria. Um, particularly multinational companies play an essential role. By adhering to the International Labour Organization labour standards and to human rights, um, by developing effective tools for risk management and corporate compliance, and by, by implementing an active corporate uh, social responsibility strategy, they can contribute to decent working conditions along their value chains and to prevent human rights violations. Companies with value chains that span the globe uh, are in particular uh, confronted with very complex problems and challenges. They need to take the responsibility for human rights, internationally recognized workers' rights, and the protection of the environment, um, and, uh, and they need to safeguard them in, their, uh, in the course of their business activities. Um, due to the globalization of economic relationships and the resulting increasing complexity of legal regulation and procurement, protection and sales processes, companies, policymakers and the society as a whole are facing new challenges. One of the big questions in the context of human rights in business is how do we provide justice in the European Union for human rights violations committed abroad by EU companies. The third pillar of the UN guiding principles, access to remedy, uh, provide a frame for possible answers to this question. Considering the complexity of international economic relations and national and international regulatory processes, there's a need for further research in this area to identify the barriers and limitations regarding jurisdiction and apl applicable uh, law rules. Austria continues to fully support the UN guiding principles on business and human rights and welcomes all steps uh, towards their meaningful implementation. We're committed to take within the ongoing preparation of a national action plan of human rights um, concrete step to implement those UN guiding principles. I'm very grateful to all of you uh, for coming here today to share your expertise. The training session will give us a deeper insight in a complex topic and for sure provides um, useful inputs. I wish you all a very productive and uh, interesting day and thank you. Good morning, la good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you as well from my side to, to Ludwig Boltzmann Institute of Human Rights for organizing uh, this excellent event and for the invitation of saying a few introductory words as well. Um, a few weeks ago, um, the researchers of uh, Ludwig Boltzmann Institute approached me and uh, asked as, uh, whether Austrian Chamber of Labor uh, could as well co-finance uh, uh, today's events and the study conducted by uh, the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute. Uh, and since a few years, Austrian Chamber uh, of Labor has an assigned budget for cooperation with universities and research institutes, the so-called Netzwerk Wissenschaft uh, in German, 
which allows us to co-finance research projects like this and uh, international corporations which go like a bit beyond our core uh, set of, of work. So I'm very pleased that we could uh, support this important and interesting e event today and uh, the uh, study on, on company-based grievance mechanisms mechanisms which uh, Ludwig Bosman Institute is currently working on. Um, Mr. Pointecker already referred to the uh, um, UN guiding principles by um, uh, John Raggi that call on the states and uh, businesses to consider a broad spectrum of remedies for victims of corporate related uh, human rights abuse. Those, uh, those uh, mechanisms could uh, be state-based, non-state-based, judicial and non-judicial. Um, I, re I reread uh, the UN guiding principles uh, like before today's events, just to remind myself on the broad uh, spectrum of mechanisms that uh, John Raggi considers uh, uh, for the states. Those include criminal and civil uh, and labor courts that may, uh, th those remedies may be located at, Na national human rights institutions, ombudspersons offices, government run uh, complaints offices, national contact points under the OECD guidelines and the company level. Those remedies may include apologies, restitutions, rehabilitation, financial or non-financial uh, compensation, punitive damages, whether criminal or administrative such as fines, prevention of harms through, for example, injunctions or guarantees of non-repetition. As well, guiding principle uh, number 25 calls on the states to facilitate pub public awareness and understanding of these mechanisms, how they can be uh, accessed and any kind of support the victims of human right, uh, rights violations might need. At the point being, uh, unfortunately, we have to say that Austria does not uh, quite use the full spectrum uh, of these mechanisms uh, uh, provided uh, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, UN guiding principles. Um, I'm sure today's conference uh, will give us a good opportunity to discuss whether the reasons can be found more within the legal system, in Austria's legal system, or whether there are more like practical, uh, the, uh, practical uh, burdens uh, for the victims not to take those kind of steps. In my point of view, today's conference is a very important contribu contribution on the way to narrow this existing gap. Um, as Ms. Login already mentioned in, in her speech, already in 2011, the EU has called on the member states to submit uh, net national action plans for the implementation of the UN guiding principle on the, uh, not on the national level. Austria, unfortunately, so far has failed to do so, though of course one has to note that important aspe aspects of the impl implementation of the UN guiding principles are covered in, uh, in different, different projects. For example, on very important today's uh, project and event and study. Another, another uh, study I would like to mention was the uh, study co uh, conducted by, uh, by Nesove on corporate uh, due diligence and how the concept of corporate due diligence could be implemented into Austrian law, which was recently presented in the, in the, in the Austrian parliament. Despite these excellent initiatives, like today's events, uh, still a systematic approach for the implementation of the UN guiding principles into Austrian policy and law is missing and would therefore be uh, very important. In this light, I hope that today's event will not be an ending point, but more a starting point on the debate uh, of remedies for victims of corporate human rights violations, and that there will be follow-up meetings with like groups like this, international and national researchers, ju judges, practitioners, as well as uh, NGOs, uh, trade unions, and as well company representatives. Thank you.